we, I don't know whether you are like myself, uh, this lockdown, though um, is as tough as the other one, it's like I saw it coming. I don't know whether you did see it coming. I saw it coming. When the number kept on getting bigger and bigger, I saw it coming. And one time I was sharing with my son, and he asked me a direct question. He asked me, Dad, would you close church? And I gave him, I tried to explain to him that I would and why I would, and I mentioned a couple of ministers that have done it. Because when you are hit with this COVID, and some of your people are also hit with this COVID, I think the best thing is to have a shutdown. But of course, before we did our shutdown, the government did our shutdown. But we are so grateful that God has spared our church and our members from this devastating disease or virus. We, we are so, so grateful. And as I thought about today then, looking at all that is happening, I, I thought, then it is true for you and for me that your enemy is not your age mate. Your enemy is not your... We have an enemy. You and I have an enemy. But it's good for you to know, and I have entitled uh, the theme of the, my sharing, it's good for you to know that they are bigger and stronger than you. That's the title. Whatever situation you find yourself, whatever enemy you find yourself struggling with, it is good for you to know your enemy is not your age mate. He is not weaker than you. He is stronger. He is bigger than you are. So don't underestimate what the devil can do. It doesn't matter. You know, sometimes we say, ee, kadambi ni kadogo, kadogo. Don't underestimate what that can do for you. There can be no doubt with all those many words that I've said that Christian life is to be won then of victory. We enjoy winning. Because there are battles, your walk with God should be full of victories. Everywhere you find yourself is victory. But if the challenge is less than you are able to bear, then the victory really is nothing more than what you can accomplish. I don't know whether you get this. I'm saying, if the challenge that I'm dealing with is 10 shillings and I have 50, then it simply means that problem that I have, really, if you, if you like, is nothing more than what I can accomplish. And therefore, not go lamenting and crying all over. Really, part one, I said, Tani wa kumi, and you had 50. You had to change. And some of us, we call some of the struggles that we have that way. But if the challenge and the battle that I'm fighting finds it, itself less than I'm able to bear, and I can bear more, but this is less than I can bear, then even that victory is nothing more than what I can accomplish. And as I've said, this is the way that most of us hope to live in our lives. We hope to live that uh, our challenge, our problem, it's less than we can handle so that we can keep on talking about the victory that we have. But lo and behold, I say again, the enemy that you and I are fighting with. It's not your age, mate. Stronger than you, bigger than you, and so on. But it's also good for us to know wherever we find ourselves that God's way, as we know them, they are not our ways. We also know that God's plan for victory, which was detailed for Israel as they prepared to enter the promised land, are always there. God has a detailed plan for me. God has detailed plan for Kenya. God has detailed plan for my victory. 
So as they prepared to enter, God had a plan. Deuteronomy 9 verse 1 and 3. Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel. You are to cross over the Jordan today and go into these possessing nations greater and mightier than yourselves, cities great and fortified up to heaven. A people great and tall, the descendants of Anakim, whom you know, and of whom you have heard it said, who can stand before the descendants of Anak? Therefore, understand today that the Lord your God is he who goes over before you as a consuming fire. I think the point is there. It is so clear that the one who goes before me, the one who goes before you, he is a consuming fire. What will he do? He will destroy them and bring them down before you so you shall drive them out and destroy them quickly as the Lord has said to you. These people, although they were told you have heard, they had not seen. You know there is this enemy. But God is promising and telling them those cities are bigger, fortified. There are some tall guys, there are some giants. But the one who goes before you, understand this. He is a consuming fire. What will he do? He will destroy them, bring them down before you, so you shall drive them out and destroy them quickly, as the Lord has said. God painted no rosy picture. It was not just rosy, rosy, rosy everything. It's not like the people who, 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 when they talk about the U.S., they only paint a very good picture. But people like Anne, who has uh, been there, studied there, she will tell you, she has a, another story. She has a rosy one, but she has also another story. Because that is a country like ours. Even Kenya has some very rosy places. But when people paint only the good, and they don't tell you there are some challenges. You know, this couple of, of Sunday, uh, the uh, times I've, I've spoken here, the other two that I've spoken here, I have said that uh, there are things that, oh my God, I wish somebody told me about. Do you know even in marriage, as you enter into it, you, you are told good things. Actually, they tell you good things. That if you bring your money and have money, you put them together, you, you're going to prosper. If you come together and agree, you can have good babies. Plan for them and, you know, educate them and so on. But there is something that they never tell us. That the person you are marrying, he is not your brother, neither is he your father. He will tell you something that nobody has ever told you. But that's marriage. It has got no challenges, but the rosy part appears good for a man that somebody will cook for you, for a lady that somebody will defend you. Now, that's, that's good, good. But we know you can marry a man who is a coward. Every knock he is hiding himself. Or you can marry a woman that does not know how to cook ugali. What are you going to do? Take her to Utali for training or you train her yourself. That's not the direction I wanted to go. I'm just saying that it was not a rosy picture for Israel regarding the strength of the people they were going to face. We even see the use of ex 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 exclamation mark at the end of verse 2 where he says, what can, who can stand before the children of Anak? Who? Nani? Mention him. So God reminded Israel repeatedly that their enemies were bigger and stronger than they were. And I want to do the same to you today. I want to read a couple of scriptures just to tell you that there are enemies, the enemies that you're going to face, and you are facing some of you already, are greater, they are stronger than you are. Deuteronomy 4 and verse 38. Deuteronomy 4 and that 8. Driving out from before you nations greater and mightier than you to bring you in 
to give you their land as an inheritance as it is this day. Now this is God telling them, by the way, this is not going to be easy. These guys are mightier. These guys are greater. The nations are greater. The nations are mightier. Deuteronomy 7 and verse number 1. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whether thou, whither thou goest to possess, and hast cast out many nations before you, the Hittites, the Gagashites, the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hevites, and the Jebusites, and the Kenyites, and the Kikuyuites, whatever they are. Seven nations greater and mightier than you. This is what the Lord is saying. He's going to do it. But he doesn't miss the point. They are greater, they are mightier, they are stronger before you. Deuteronomy 9 and verse 1. Hear, O Israel, you are to cross over the Jordan today and go to dispossess nations greater and mightier than yourself, cities greater and fort fortified up to heaven. Very great words, but it is God telling them. But he's saying them, you will dispossess. And I think if you can hear what God is saying, he's not saying you may, you might, He's saying you will. And I want to speak to you also. God is not saying to Bahatishe. No, he's saying we can. He's saying we will. We will. We will. Deuteronomy 11 verse 23b. And you shall possess. And you shall dispossess greater and mighty nations than yourself. Yes. And you shall possess great nations and mightier than yourself. There could be no doubt that God was painting a clear picture of the fall, the enemy. There was no intention on God's part to deceive his people regarding the reality of the mighty enemy. Who was this giants in the land? Who were these giants in the land? Deuteronomy 2 verse 10 to 11. The Emims dwelt there in times past a people great and many. The Emim had dwelt there in times past, a people as great and numerous and tall as the Anakim. They were also regarded as giants like the Anakim, but the, the Moabites called them Emim. Emim means terror. And we have an emim in this country. There is terror. It has been spoken. But God is saying, you and I are able to overcome. It is because of this terror that we too begin to shrink from the giants that are before us. Sadly, very sadly, the people had come to the conclusion that this, since these are giants and these giants were bigger than their own strength, Victory was not possible. But I'm saying, whose report are we going to believe? Is it the report of God or the report of men? If it is the report of God, let's go and possess the land. It is ours. Victory is ours. And Christian walk and Christian life is a walk of victory. Numbers 13, that, 32 to 33. This is one of the saddest places and words that people have spoken. And they give the children of Israel a bad report of the land, which they had spied out, saying, the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants and all the people. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. Now, first of all, there is a contradiction. I don't know whether you have seen that. That statement... God is saying, those people are mighty and strong, but go, dispossess them, go and possess their land. But the report they bring is that that land eats its own people. And you know, the devil is a liar. You and I know that some of the reports that you like hearing are the most negative report. Your ears are inclined for all the negative reports. And the people of Israel are not exceptional. When they were told, what do you think? 
You are not even fighting with anybody. The country will eat you up. Will you go? No, nobody would go to a country that is eating itself. But then the contradiction is that there are also giants there. The question is, why is the country not eating its own giants? But if you like me from where I'm coming from with all what God has said, it simply means that land can eat its own people and destroy its own giants. God has already given me victory. Now, there we saw the giant, the son of Anak, which came of the giants, and we were in our own sight. Now, this is another thing. How can you see yourself? Where are you to see yourself? Wewe, unajionea wapi? Ati sisi tulijiona. Sisi. Sisi diyo tulijiona. I refuse to see myself in any other way than the way God sees me. I am not what my mind, my thinking, my ability is. I am what God says I am. God knew that there were giants there, but he says, go, go get it. It's yours. I have won it for you. Now, we don't necessarily call these giants emims or sons of Anak, if asked. If you are asked today, how are you doing? You don't say there are emims around. We don't no normally say we I have got to deal with emims, but nonetheless, we do face giants in our lives today. Today, our giants are fear, loneliness, anger, temptation, discouragement, disappointment, and doubt. They come in the form of unpaid bills, uncertainty about the future. You are not sure being sucked from your place of work, your business not doing well. Those are the giants that we are fighting today. They stand tall and they tout at us and at times we become paralyzed. A landlord comes and says, you have not paid for 10 months. You will have to leave my house. Terror, fear. Those are the giants that we face today. But what is necessary for us to move forward uh, is for us to have what I will call courage. 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 I'd uh, talk to Felix and I told him that... Uh, I don't want to say it, but, but I've already said it. That I want to have a series facing our giants. And the topic today, those giants of yours are greater and stronger than you are. So Felix, wherever you are, it has come. But one word that we want to deal with today is courage. Courage. What are you courage ya kusema? Nini, kuja, nini, and then kunja, gunza. Hiyo siyo courage ingini na kuwaka uoga. Unataka kutisha mtu. But we are saying courage like we saw Joshua and Karib. If you define courage, courage begins with a surrender to God's sovereignty and trust in God's strength. If you are a believer, your courage can only come from knowing the sovereignty of God. He will take one, leave another. He will heal one and one dies. He will provide for one, the other one is sacked. Sovereignty of God. If you know the sovereignty of God and number two, then you know God's strength. That will give you courage. Christians, what do we need today? We need courage. We also need the providential ability of God that God will always provide. And then we also need to know that places where giants are along the pathway, in, in my walk, there is always a God who has gone before me. Listen to what God was telling them. 
He was telling them, Nitaenda, I will deal with them. What was the part of the children of Israel? Was to follow. I ask myself, when did the wall of Jericho crumble? Now some of you theologians here, you tell me it crumbled when they walk around seven times. Or six and then seven, seven times. The point is, that thing was destined to fall. All what it needed was a shout of victory. You know, I, have, you ever, have you ever watched that movie? It looks very interesting. Timid, children of Israel, they're just walking with their children and goats and, you know, and there are guys on the other side, look, you cannot even fight with these guys. They are timid, they are afraid. They are just walking, you know, and they walk around and then they go back to the forest. If you are even an, an army general, would you fight those kind of people? No. And yet God was using their faith to weaken the foundation. There are some wars, and I express this with a, with a lot of faith in my heart, there are some wars in your life. You don't need to, to do anything. All what you need is a shout of victory, declaring what God has done for you. Joshua was reminded that God knew and God knew what he was doing and that it was to take confident or have confidence in him. Joshua 1 verse 6 and 7 and verse 9. Be strong and of good courage. For this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I saw to their fathers to give them. At that point, only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. Verse number 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Don't be afraid nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So I ask, Swali la kwanza na jiuliza. How did Joshua have courage? How did Joshua have courage? That's my point number one. How did Joshua have courage? Three things that I find in Joshua's life. Number one, he was reminded of the command of God to be courageous. Be strong and of good courage. Two, he was reminded that God's presence would be with him. Joshua 1, 9, the Lord thy God is with thee. And three, he was reminded that God's promise was in, still intact. For unto this people, what God has given as a promise. Now those things are critical for us if we are going to be courageous in this time. Number one, we know what God has said about us. Number two, we know that the presence of God is always going to be with us. Number three, we know that his promises never change. It's not like a man that he can change his mind. But point number two, when courage is denied, people become paralyzed. Just when the spies brought back the evil report to Israel and talking about the land that consumes his own people, people cried and feared. So also because of Saul's fear, you know, it's, it, you know when, when, you, when you get close to what God was doing to the children of Israel as they received the report of how the country eats his own people, yani inchi nakura watu wake, you know, inchi nakura watu wake, they were so fearful and they cried. It's also recorded the same thing happened in First Samuel, when Saul's fe fear in his army paralyzed them with the fear. They were so paralyzed. And one Goliath would appear. And I think he was a proud fellow. Very proud. Nani? Nani? Mtumishi wa Sauli, mumoja tu, akuje tu chapane nae. Niki mchapa, nyinyi. Na ye ni akini chapa, sisi tu, wawiri tu, chapa na wawiri tu. And the Bible says for many days, he would echo that and the children of Israel, 
the army of Saul will be scared to death. First Samuel 17 verse 11. When Saul and all Israel heard those words from the, the, the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. King Saul acted no differently than even those children of Israel in the wilderness. Daniel 5 verse 6, we find another king that also was fearful, Belshazzar. Then the king's countenance was changed and his thought troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loosed and his knees smote one against another. Yani, marui kagongana. Yani, you are so scared that uh, you are shaking. We used to have teachers. See, wali wali, wali We used to have teachers. And we knew if you stand before that teacher, that was when we were in, was in law primary. That teacher, kiboka ya keri kwa na uchungu kuri kwa wale wengine. Kwa vunge ona kamtoto ka standard two na three, kama sima mambere ya ke, uki kangari ya chini ona kameja kameja ji ji malizia. Hakana kitu imabaki. <laughs> this is what this king is trying to tell us. He was so afraid that he was shaking every part of his body. First Samuel 17, 23 to 24. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistines of Gath, Goliath by name out of the armies of Phil the Philistines and spoke according to the same words. And David had them. And all the men, and all the men, woo, of Israel, when they saw the man, they fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. When courage has been denied, then people have a big problem. People become paralyzed. And I speak to you, don't allow faith, your, your courage to be denied. Stand up. Be courageous. The Lord was promised he will come through for us. He will come through for you. He will come through for me. Number three. When courage is demonstrated, people become empowered. And I want to speak to you, my brother, my sister, let courage arise within you. Let courage arise within you. Let courage arise within you. David had the touting of, his, of this heathen giant. The task may have been humanly impossible, but like Joshua, David knew this, that the Lord thy God is with thee wherever thou goest. Now that is key for us, that wherever we go, the Lord is with me. Is the Lord with me during this lockdown? The answer is yes. Was he there in the first lockdown? The answer is yes. Will he be with me when the lockdown is over? The answer is yes, but you need to know it and practice it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So David knew. So first Samuel 17, 37, David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. I, I sometimes wonder, was Saul serious? David ni mdogo. makubwa. But I want to tell you, did you know? <laughs> this is very unique. I am three years old. My mother wants to go to, to the other ka village. He gets hold of me. Ati ni mpereke. Now when I look at it today, this is maybe what she, she meant. If she gets into trouble, I will run to call for help. That's the only thing I could do. Now, surely here you are and there is this small boy. What are you going to do? Hey, you're going to do it? God be with you. I don't think he was saying God be with you. God be with you, with you. He was saying, Where? The Lord save you from this, this guy. But David is saying, So, 
I have dealt with some challenging moments. It is not just there was a lion. It is the, the circumstance before me was lionish, but I dealt with this. Was bearish, and I dealt with it. David had seen God at work, and I'm speaking to people that have seen God working. God has worked in your life. And because he has worked in your life in the past, even David says, even this situation, God is going to help me to come out. David had confidence. David knew the sovereignty of God. And he knew God can come even in the times of danger. But David is like he's saying, like the children of Israel the, 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 in the book of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who is telling the king, king live forever, we know God can deliver us, but even if he doesn't, the sovereignty of God, God will still come through for us. So David had confidence. And David, the, the choice of David's weapons was not conventional. It was intentional. And I say again, the weapons that you and I have are not conventional. See your bunduki. But they are intentional. And it's good to know that. When you have an intentional weapon, you can beat someone who has a conventional weapon. But Saul did not know that. So what does he do? Verse 38. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of, of mail, and David guarded his sword upon his armor, and he, he uh, said to go, for he had not proved it. Yani hangi aweza kuinuka na kuenda kwa sabu wako amejaribu. And then he said, I cannot go with this, for I have not proved them. David put them off. I'm not going to use what I have not proved. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What I have proved in the past, the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, I'm going to use it again and again and again. I'm not going to use those things that I have not used before. And David, what he had used before, took. He took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones. And David goes on to fight with his sticks and stones. Are we going to win this battle? Yes. But how are we going to do it? When courage is demonstrated, then people become empowered. At this point, they don't know what is going to happen. They are still afraid. And so David waits for this courageous man to come up. And this man comes and he says, He looked up, uh, about and, uh, and saw David. And he, th David was a youth and rowdy. And, and there he was, just a small boy. The Philistines said unto David, verse 43, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with the stones? What David could not tell him is that, yes, you are a dog. Actually, you, you are a bear. Oh, you, you look like a lion. I, you, 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 you are. So David, this guy is so proud. And, and he tells David, But look at David's courage. David said unto the Philistines, Wewe, you are coming to me with a sword, conventional weapon. You are coming with a spear, conventional weapon. You are coming with a shield, conventional weapon. But I'm coming to you with an intention. I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. I'm coming to you in the name of the God of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defined. I'm coming in his name. I'm not coming conventionally. I'm coming intentionally. Hallelujah. And he tells them, this day, the Lord will deliver you into mine own hands, and I will smit thee and take thy head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the foes of the air and to the wild beasts and the earth. He, he is actually telling him, Nyama yako hata ita liwa na ndege, nitakata kichwa. Lakini nyama ya Philistine, nitawachia ndege wa jienjoe. Why? I'm coming with you with intention. The name of the Lord my God. Courage in the face of giants, 
results in deliverance. Not only was David about to deliver a dose of courage to Goliath, he was going to give some to the Israelites as well. David put his hand in his bag, verse 49, and took hence a stone, slung it, and spot the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sank into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the ground. Now, this is also something that is very interesting. And I don't know whether you have, you have ever seen this. The force of the stone would have caused Goliath to fall which way? Forward way or backwards? But he fell well. How did he fall? Forward. Dogo. Don't you see there was a force forcing him to go towards the stone in a speed that only God could do it? The impact of the stone would have caused him to fall backwards. But the Bible says he fell down and yet the stone sank. Ni kwa sababu kuna jamali shika kichwa, akaelekeza kwa jiwe, akasukuma ye kwa jiwe. May the Lord do it to you also. That stone the devil has been trying to throw to you, may he turn back to the devil and God put a force on the devil that the devil falls forward, not backwards. Because he has to honor God. Number two, he fell forward. Why? Because we, we honor God by falling forward, not backwards. We fall forward before him, honoring our God. Courage. Oh, I wish, I wish you were in church, you at home, because you would say amen for that. Because courage simply means it will not only give me courage, but courage will meet the enemy and God will be involved. When I go one step, God is coming many ways, pushing the devil towards the stone. That have, it doesn't matter whether it is a smooth stone or a rough stone. Woo! Glory to God. It doesn't matter where I am. I know my enemy is stronger, greater than myself, but God is the one who is saying that I will conquer, that I will overcome. I want to bring this to a conclusion and say this. Don't let anyone tell you that your giants are not real. Your giants are real. Whether fear or lack or sickness or disease, your giants are real. Don't allow anybody. In fact, your giants are bigger than you. Your giants are stronger than you. Your giants are meaner. They are very mean than you. And they are more powerful than you. Yes. But the Bible says, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. May the Lord give you victory. And when it happens, may God receive all the honor. And all the glory. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that the truth be told. We are facing giants that are bigger, that are stronger, that are organized than ourselves. But they are coming with conventional weapons. But Paul is telling us that our weapons are not the usual, the normal. But they are strong to the pulling down of stronghold. We are pulling the strongholds, Heavenly Father, that are hoving around our people in the name of the Lord. Whatever it is, we pull it down this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. We'll use the name of the Lord. We'll use the blood of Jesus. We'll speak intentionally of what God has done for us and victory is guaranteed for us. So wherever you are and you feel afraid, you feel scared because the enemy is greater than you, I want you to put your hands upon your heart and say with God, nothing will be impossible. I want you to say it again. Putting your heart, your hand on your heart, say this again with God. Nothing shall be impossible. May you walk in the victory of God this week. In Jesus' name, amen.